Well, it's great to be in worship with you today and uh, this morning. And, and I just want to want you to hear me say we are keeping our ears to the ground for any changes that might be announced by, you know, state authorities in, in regards to in-person worship. Uh, we had anticipated being here today in person, but we're online and I'm excited that we're able to be together, though we're not really together. We are in this together. And I want to encourage you, if you can do so, to, to look on the florenceumc.com slash live to find the Florence UMC app. Uh, there on your phone, in your, on your laptop, uh, pad, you find uh, notes for the, you can fi find the scripture and then write your own notes on the sermon. Again, florenceumc.com slash live, and you get all kinds of things there. I want to begin today, though, by saying I love to read and I love to preach from the Bible. Uh, confession time, I don't spend as much time as I should in the Bible. Over the years, though, I've grown to know and love this book. I've also grown to know and love certain portions of the book more than other parts. And I am not at all saying certain parts of the Bible are more sacred or more important I have just grown to know and love certain parts more than others. And can I say that's a reflection on me? That's not a reflection on the Bible. John Wesley was famous for saying, let me be a man of one book. Well, he was so educated. Of course, he had read so many other books beside the Bible. But one book dominated his life. If I ask you to just quickly say and name your favorite book of the Bible, which would it be? Some of you would quickly say the Psalms, or some might say John or Joshua for all the action, or Isaiah. Some might have to confess you don't really know enough Bible to claim a favorite. That's perfectly okay. Over the next few weeks, I want to preach out of my favorite book, or at least out of the book that I have spent the most time over my years as a Christian investing in. And it may surprise you to hear that I am talking about the book that we know as the Proverbs. I have been a consistent reader of the Proverbs for many years, and I want to tell you how that got started. It's the spring of 1978. I'm a sophomore in college and preparing to go on a summer missions trip to Spain. Actually, Pam and I both went on that same mission trip to Spain. And, you know, it was the beginning of many wonderful things in my life. But that's another story for another time. I went to a meeting of the mission organization we were going to Spain with, where I heard Dr. Virginia Brubaker speaking, and she was sharing out of Proverbs 16, verse 3, which says, Commit your ways to the Lord and your plans will be established. She then continued on to Psalm 37, verse 5, which says, Commit your ways to the Lord, trust Him, and He will act. Which finally led her to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Well, that summer, Proverbs 16.3 was my verse. I knew God had put it in there just to encourage me as I was going on this mission trip. In fact, as a result of that meeting and that summer trip, a love affair began with the book of Proverbs in my life. But let me tell you what I mean. Dr. Brubaker went on to issue not only words of encouragement, but words of challenge. She challenged us to a proverb a day, kind of like the old adage, an apple a day. How does the idea of a proverb a day work? Well, if you look at the book of Proverbs, you see it has 31 chapters. Guess what? The month of August has 31 days. I, I know it started yesterday, but I would like to invite you to come walk with me in this month of August through the book of Proverbs as a congregation, as one family together, one chapter a day, 31 chapters, 31 days, hmm, a proverb a day. I know someone is saying to themselves, man, I'm already one day behind. Don't, don't worry. 
you, you can catch up. And you can't get lost. All you have to do is grab your phone, look at a calendar, and you know exactly where you are. When Dr. Brubaker issued that invitation, I thought to myself, I can do that for this summer, and I did. Well, that stretched on and on, and the truth is that I have kept this schedule of a proverb a day almost every day for over 40 years. So you can see why I love this book. I have spent a lot of time in this book. And I'm asking you to spend time, some time with me in this book now. There are lots of reasons to spend time in the Proverbs, but let me share with you one of my main reasons for doing so on such a regular basis. You know, every time I read one of the chapters, I get the feeling I have just had a conversation with someone who is a whole lot smarter than I am, a whole lot wiser than I am, a person who has experienced a lot of life and can talk about it in just a sane manner. I get the feeling I am better for having been in this conversation. I have been in conversation with somebody, someone much smarter than me, but who, who's not talking down to me. I don't know about you, but I think that kind of conversation is time well spent. So let's, be, let's begin to look through the Proverbs together. Tradition tells us, and actually the book of Proverbs tells us, that King Solomon was probably the main contributor to the writings. We are certain that he did not write it all. In fact, uh, he may have simply been the primary compiler of these wise words. Someone named Agur and another named Lemuel are, are given credit for some of the book. We were, we were told in 1 First, First Kings 4 uh, verse 30 that Solomon was had a wisdom that far surpassed the people of the East. Well, some of the sections are just simply called words of the wise. Again, 31 chapters, a proverb a day. Scholars tell us that the book was most likely finally compiled in its present form about the year 700 BC, which is a few centuries after Solomon's time. What do we mean when we use the word proverb. Uh, what is a proverb? Well, it is usually a short saying, usually two lines teaching that often rely on contrasting thoughts to make its point. Most of the time, it has to do with just kind of ordinary daily life. And we're going to hear and see so many things that, you know, just make sense. They aren't necessarily profoundly theological or even religious. These teachings just make sense. The Proverbs covers a wide range of topics, and we're not going to even begin to try to touch in just five weeks all the different topics. We will simply touch on a few topics in the book and then let that topic take us to other places in Scripture that, that also deal with the theme or the topic of the day. Today, I'm going to share a lot of verses out of the Proverbs. We aren't going to spend a lot of time on any of them. We'll come back to many of them over the next uh, weeks. So, a quick overview of the book today. Look, watch with me. I love this book because it is so practical. Listen to some of this. Chapter 17, verse 28. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Isn't that great? Chapter 26, verse 17. He who meddles in quarrels, not his own, is like one who takes a passing dog by the ears. Now there's a picture. Chapter 30, verse 33. For pressing milk produces curds. Pressing the nose produces blood, and pressing anger produces strife. 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Such practical teaching. But you know, this book is also a family book. And we're going to go into that very specifically in a couple of weeks. 
The first eight chapters of Proverbs are addressed to my son. Uh, it's a father speaking to his son. It may also be a teacher speaking to his pupil. Perhaps the most well-known of the Proverbs about children comes from chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he or she should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The book also has a lot to say about being productive and a good worker. Chapter 6, verse 6, invites us to observe the ant, yes, the insect, the ant, as a model of productivity. Chapter 21, verse 25, the desire of the sluggard, who is a lazy person, the desire of the sluggard kills him for his hand refuses to work. In other words, you have to be willing to work to achieve certain things. It even has something to say about always making excuses for not getting things done. Again, chapter 22, verse 13, the sluggard says, there's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. Everyone reading that knew there wasn't a lion in the streets. The Proverbs is very strong on calling us to live lives of morality and integrity. Proverbs 4 challenges us not to even get close to evil. Don't be enticed by evil. There are several words, Proverbs of Wisdom, about sexual temptations. Fathers and mothers are to talk straightforwardly with their sons and daughters about sexual things. Chapter 5, verse 15 says, Drink water from your own cistern. In other words, don't mess around with someone else's wife. Chapter 11, verse 22 talks about a woman, talks about how a woman should dress. What a picture it paints. <laughs> like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman without discretion. There's a call to be honest in the workplace. Chapter 20, verse 10 says, unequal weights and unequal measures are both alike an abomination to the Lord. You know, some of the best teachings of this book are about relationships, all types of relationships. The Proverbs talk about how we're to treat our neighbors. It warns us about being careful of the company we keep. Chapter 22, verses 24, 25. Don't befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. Chapter 13, verse 20 says, he who walks with wise men becomes wise. Perhaps the best known verse about friendship is found in chapter 27, verse 17. And many of you could quote this one. Iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. So what is the key to this book of Proverbs? What is the major theme of the book, the goal of the writings? Well, I think... It can be found early in the book, chapter 1, verse 7. Listen to this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then the contrary statement, fools despise wisdom and instruction. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Well, you know that it does not mean to live in terror of God. I think it is calling us to examine how we view the Lord. What is our level of respect to the way God wants us to live? Are we seeking after God's wisdom for our lives? Are we genuinely desiring to walk in God's ways? Or are we just kind of rather foolishly going with the flow and doing whatever comes naturally to us? Probably the most quoted verse out of this that we call the Proverbs is chapter 3, Verses 5 and 6. You've, you've heard these words. Many of you know them by heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. This book calls us to the truth that God has to be number one. 
We are to teach our children that God is to be number one. When people come in contact with us, they should be able to know very quickly that God is number one in our lives. And if God is number one, then we can trust God completely. We, we will not be constantly worrying about things that only God can control. We don't have to be in control of everything. And I know that's hard for some of us. We like to be in control. I think one of the strengths of this book is the fact that it is always speaking about daily life. In fact, it is written to speak to us a little bit every day. What do we say? 31 chapters, 31 days, a proverb a day. As I wrap up, I want to just take the idea of a proverb a day to a literal application. I want to give you a proverb for each day of the week that maybe can be a verse you think about over the next several weeks, even though you're going to be spending time reading through the other 31 chapters. For example, for Sunday, the theme verse that I mentioned before, chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But for Monday, chapter 25, verse 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. You know, everyone needs a good word on a Monday. Tuesday, again, back to chapter 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You might encounter rough spots throughout this week. Keep your eyes on him. Wednesday, chapter 28, verse 27. He who gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many curses. One way to make it through the week is to help someone else along the way. How about Thursday? Back to chapter 27, verse 17. Iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. Be sure to be a true friend to someone. Friday, chapter 22, verse 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. Be able at the end of the week to look back over the week with a clear conscience. Saturday, chapter 10, verse 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. You know, no matter what happens, love is still the answer. Now, if you didn't already find and upload and maybe even print the Proverbs worksheet that came with an email that you should have received earlier this week, and you can find it there on florenceumc.com slash live. Let me encourage you to do so. There's a line for each chapter, 31 lines, then a space to choose one verse from each chapter and uh, write a reflection or an, an insight or a challenge that came to you as you were reading that day. You will also find the uh, proverb of the day that I, that I just went through a moment ago for each day of the week. So... Let's start our walk together. Use the Sunday verse today, if you like. I'm not necessarily going to follow the readings for the sermons. I just want us to spend time walking and reading together. Like I said earlier about another issue in our lives, we are in this together. I'm convinced the Lord will speak to us and guide us as we are and if we are willing to listen. You're going to see at the bottom of that sheet that I prompted you to just a moment ago, a place to sign that you are, with God's help, going to be part of the reading of the Proverbs through this month of August. This is for your eyes only. I am looking forward to our conversation, our conversations with wisdom over the weeks that are ahead. Friends, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for all the ways that you remind us 
of your love and of your mercy, of your goodness, of your watch care over us. Thank you for the people that come in and out of our lives that bring just the word that we need to hear at a certain point. Thank you for these words written in the Proverbs for us. Help us, Lord, we pray, over these next days to just dive in and to drink deep and to learn some things that we have maybe never heard before, to be reminded of things that we've known for a long time. But Lord, may we hear your voice as you speak to us through wise voices in the Proverbs. We love you. We thank you for the truth that you love us. And we pray these things in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I do want to encourage you, go, go get this sheet off of our website and use it over these 31 days that we're walking together through Proverbs in August. The praise team reminded us of how wonderful it is to say, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, have a wonderful week of ministry. Amen.